Hey, we hate that. You already know who it is. It's the radioactive pop with Danny Limelight. United Wrestling Network, World Heavyweight Champion. And make sure you tune into the Lions blog every week. You heard it here first. Straight from Bobby. You know, they announced Randy Orton early because they wanted to discourage the fans from thinking he would be there. But I mean, how could how could the fans not be excited? I mean, you're talking about a former world's heavyweight champion. I mean, he's held countless titles in the WWE. Uh, I mean, he's had his career goes back so many years. But um, I think it's amazing that on a night where the legend killer Randy Orton returns to the WWE. He was only outshined by Ron the Truth Killings, former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, The Truth. Hey, this is Jay Cal, and you're tuned in to the Alliance Blog Podcast, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. This is a little bit different on the Alliance Blog Podcast. We don't uh, discriminate as much in terms of what we talk about. Uh, Of course, everyone is talking about CM Punk and his triumphant return in Chicago. Man, did I have it wrong. But, you know, I I found out today that there's some validity to what I thought. And this wasn't based on any innuendo. This wasn't based on any, uh, you know, little scraps that someone gave me. You know, my name isn't Nick House and people aren't feeding me information. Uh... This was just uh, an opinion that I had that CM Punk uh, would have made his debut in another wrestling promotion. His his return to pro wrestling somewhere else. They say hell has frozen over, but man, this could be the dawn of a new era. And, And what better way to put the boots to AEW and Tony Khan by signing the guy that was selling the most merchandise. The guy that was popping those ratings. The guy that got people to tune in. And in Chicago, of all places. Hey, we're going to talk about CM Punk when we come back. But uh, I, I, I think this is a huge victory for the world wrestling entertainment. Times are tough now, guys. And it's no joke out here. That's why I'm very proud to be partnering with the Upside app. They're leveling the playing field, guys. They're giving you opportunities to earn cash back on on purchases for groceries, purchases for gasoline, purchases for food. These are the things we all spend our money on all the time. I believe in Upside. I use Upside weekly. My lifetime earnings is over $408. And you too can be earning cash back on your Philips, your groceries, or your eating out experiences just by signing up. And it's free. By using my invite code, J-A-S-O-N-75338, that's Jason753338, you'll earn $5 cash back on your first fill-up. Use the link in the video description or download the app, but make sure you use that invite code, J-A-S-O-N-753338, and make money by using the Upside app. Do you know the lengths that the WWE had to have gone through to keep this a secret from the dirt sheets? I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible. You know, they sent out a press release essentially uh, identifying that uh, there had been a lot of rumors and innuendo about CM Punk joining the roster and that those were not true. And who knows, maybe at the time they weren't true. It's kind of hard to understand entirely Uh, Because, you know, that stuff is all privy. We don't know. But, uh, you know, they they apparently the reason for announcing Randy Orton uh, before the pay-per-view, they did that on Raw the week before as the mystery uh, uh, partner for Cody and Jay and Sammy uh, is because they they didn't want it to be a shock. They didn't want it to be a surprise when it wasn't CM Punk. That's how clever these guys are. That's how smart they are. Who, if you say you didn't get worked here, I don't know, man. I I, I mean, I know there's some people out there who are holding out hope. 
that CM Punk would return to the WWE. And you know what? I, I even think I might have been one of them, but I my problem with Punk returning to the WWE is the same problem I had with the idea of Punk returning to the WWE. It's almost the same problem I have with AEW as it signs free agent after free agent after free agent. There's only so many spots on the roster for so many people. And every time a new free agent is signed, that means somebody is losing a spot. Now, if you look currently at the dynamic of the WWE and you look at its uh, world title picture, I mean, most people are predicting that Roman Reigns will take on Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania for the undisputed unified WWE World Championship Galaxy S. Razor. I don't know. Uh, that, That title that is been around the waist so securely against Roman Reigns will be up for grabs, and most people think it's going to be Cody Rhodes. I'm one of them. Then you have guys still on the roster. Shinsuke Nakamura. You still have, uh, you know, uh, Drew Galloway. You still have uh, Sheamus when he returns. You still have... Uh, you know, Damian Priest, who has that uh, opportunity that the money in the bank, you still have, you know, and I know they haven't really featured him in this way, but Kevin Owens at the drop of a hat could be a main event guy. You've been pushing Jay Uso as a main event guy. Seth freaking Rollins will probably be defending his title, uh, but you have LA Knight. You have so many guys up and coming. Hell, Gunther is about to surpass the longest reigning intercontinental championship uh, ever and, and and so it's like well, where <laughs> where does cm punk fit into all this uh and in and, and at least with aew and i don't have the the statistics that can back this up but just from the sniff test just what i saw on television just when you'd hear those pop reactions when cm punk was on television for aew they would get ratings he was selling merchandise more so than anybody else. And although, you know, he was plagued by injury and controversy and the last year in AEW was kind of a farce, uh, you know, I had big hopes for what they were going to do with Collision. So it was disappointing when he was fired and in in some circles thought that he would be returning. And what a play that would have been if it would have been CM Punk behind the mask all along, right? I mean, how good of a booker, how good of a storyteller if they were able to weave all of that in just to making us believe that CM Punk was gone, but in fact he was the devil. Uh, For those of you that don't watch AEW, MJF used to have a devil's mask that he would wear uh, quite routinely, and somebody has been parading around in the mask and attacking people. Uh, A lot of people were speculating that it could be CM Punk, but obviously that's not the case. As I digress, though, I, I want to talk about I want to talk about CM Punk's choice to go to the WWE because, as it turns out, that wasn't the only offer on the table, and it's it's pretty much like I alluded to on another episode of the Alliance Blog Podcast, where I thought if you're gonna make an impact, what better place to do it than TNA Wrestling? I, I know some of you guys are gonna say first. TNA doesn't have money for that. And that's, you guys are all wrong. Anthem is a major mover and shaker when it comes to uh, entertainment in uh, Canada and internationally. Uh, you know, they own Access TV, where uh, I believe that's uh, that's where uh, uh, Impact airs currently. But PW, well, I'm getting this secondhand from PW Insider. I'm getting it from Ryan Clark, who reported this. Earlier today, Ryan Clark of E-Wrestling News, sourcing Pro Wrestling Insider, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, He said that Punk was actually considering a major money offer made by TNA Wrestling before uh, he finalized that multi-year deal with the WWE. And that's the other thing, too. It's a multi-year deal with the WWE. It's not a short-term contract. It wasn't just a, hey, show up for tonight. No, Punk is signed for a long-term deal. And there was a lot of 
verbiage at the time when uh, Impact, now TNA, or, or I guess still Impact, uh, was running their uh, TV tapings in Chicago, that uh, CM Punk was in attendance. And they said that he was visiting people backstage, but we've come to learn that he was actually in advanced discussions with Scott D'Amore and Lou D- D'Angelini. D'Angeli. Uh, and there was a, a serious offer made that would bring a CM Punk back to TNA wrestling. Now, the sources uh, have indicated that Impact believed at one point that the promotion was very close to bringing in Punk and that they wanted him to appear at Bound for Glory 2023 as part of the announcement, but uh, as part of the announcement that Impact was rebranding, rebranding as TNA, but of course that didn't come uh, into fruition. Uh, the conversations continued after Bound for Glory, and people in Impact remained hopeful about bringing Punk in as a full-time wrestler. So again, it's not uh, not a guy who's going to work the big shows or a guy who's going to just show up for a couple episodes of TV and then go back to Chicago. No, he, he was he was then and was still is <laughs> was looking for a a a, a opportunity to wrestle. And as we talked about before, landing Punk on the Impact roster, TNA Wrestling, uh, you're certainly going to have people who are going to tune into that. The reason why Punk was such a smart signing for the WWE is because, again, he was one of the main attention getters for AEW. Eyeballs affixed to CM Punk. And you don't really even need any more proof than the fact that when Punk walked out from behind the curtain we'll take it a step back the show is over the show is over survivor series is over you know uh the 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 judgment day had lost it looked like things were done and all of a sudden cult of personality as the credits seemed the, the lower third appeared on screen uh, cult of personality plays out on the loudspeakers and it gets a humongous pop. Now we've seen this in the past where it's a swerve like, Oh, here comes Stephanie or here comes this person. And I think the folks in Chicago still thought that they were getting work that maybe it would have been Ron Killings that came out to that theme music. But when punk walked out the, the level of excitement in that crowd, it changed dramatically. And this is one of the beautiful things that I love about pro wrestling. When people tell me that pro wrestling is sports entertainment, it, to a degree, you're right. But it's also this beautiful art form. And when done correctly, tells these amazing stories. When Punk had left the WWE 10 years ago, there was all this animosity, all this anger and vitriol. And you never thought that the two sides would ever, ever come back together. And lo and behold, uh, after going to AEW and proving his value much like much like Cody Rhodes did uh, a few years earlier and it took him a little bit longer when when Punk walked into AEW he instantly brought more credibility to that brand and people were watching more AEW and they were selling out larger arenas and when you notice when CM Punk was suspended and or injured that's when their attendance started dropping because when he was world champion, I mean, I remember them selling out venues. I remember their ratings doing as good, if not better, than some of the WWE programs. So, <laughs> easy to say, WWE made a smart, really a cerebral-like move, of course, from a wrestler who was formerly known as a cerebral assassin. Uh but getting back to impact, the conversations continued after Bound for Glory. Uh, however, it, it, they once they realized that Punk was in talks with the WWE, that he could earn a bigger paycheck with them, it sounds like the folks at Impact were very supportive of him going and getting another run with uh, the WWE. It even says that several Impact wrestlers appreciated the time Punk spent with them when he visited the tapings in Chicago. Uh also, Ryan notes in his report that uh, he was Punk was never at any point set to return to AEW. It was never planned to be the devil. So, although, again, that would have been amazing booking. That just wasn't the case. And, and again, the same, the same things that I thought about a couple of weeks ago, 
maybe, maybe even a couple months ago when Punk was gone. Uh, again, where do we slot him in the WWE? And that's a problem. I mean, that's a good problem for Triple H to have because, uh, you know, there's so many stories that can be told from this point going forward. Objectively, I would think, uh, especially with as vocal as Seth Rollins has been and uh, continues to be, I would imagine that we're going to have a Seth Rollins versus CM Punk feud. But the fact of the matter is CM Punk never really lost his AEW championship. I kind of hope they go full board and, and pay homage to Ric Flair when he came to the WWE in 1993. Or was it 92? Maybe it's in 91. Uh, the first time Ric Flair came to the WWE and was calling himself the world's world, real world's champion, they started to, to play on that in AEW when he brought out the title with the X spray painted through it, uh, much, much like the straight edge hands that would adorn those same markered X's when attending punk shows to prove to people that you are in fact straight edge. And so I, I don't know, man, it's, it's still wild to me, but I, I still could have, man, think about if he would have made that uh, decision to go to impact. I, obviously they weren't going to pay him as much as the WWE could have, but if he would have had a decent contract to go to the, go to impact and those matchups that they could have had, you know, Chris Sabin, uh, Josh Alexander, uh, you know, and then some of the obscure ones, PCO or Moose. I mean, it could have been very, very interesting, I think, and uh, absolutely would have brought more eyeballs to the product and I think would have been such a huge victory for Impact. And again, I can't state this enough. I feel like this is a huge win for the WWE. And I hear a lot of detractors saying, well, wasn't he a problem in Impact or in, in AEW just a couple of weeks ago? I've never been in an AEW locker room, and to be quite honest, I've never been in a WWE locker room or a, or a TNA locker room. But I also know that where AEW is ran by Tony Khan, you know, um, what what's his wrestling background before buying or creating All In? He was a fan. He was a fan. It's not like he worked for the WWEs for years or uh, someone trained him on, on the old school style of booking or like he was brought in or had experience in the ring or anything like that. It was just, hey, I'm a fan and I have money. Let's do this. And the people he surrounded himself by, although I would say very successful, the Young Bucks and Cody, Hangman Page, uh, you know, I don't feel like uh, outside of Cody that that those guys really had a a proper upbringing in the business if that makes sense now look the young bucks they're from my backyard and i know that they trained uh at, at the rudos dojos the same place that produced like super dragon and scorpio sky and uh in 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 that ilk but i always felt that uh the young bucks even going back some 15 years ago, always kind of had that. Uh, I don't want to call it anti-professional. I don't want to say that they're unprofessional. I don't want to. I'm not saying that, but it was never an old school feel with those guys. And and maybe that's a good thing, right? Maybe the business needs to evolve. But, uh, you know, CM Punk very much was trained in the old school, old school mentality of wrestling. And when he, you know, when he'd come out to Southern California and wrestle for pro wrestling gorilla, you know, it was always a styles clash, you know, CM Punk and Adam Pierce versus super dragon and B boy. I mean, these were style clashes and matches, but uh, I guess the point I'm trying to get to is, you know, WWE is a wrestling sanctuary. Uh, that's not what I want to say. It, it, it's a wrestling through and through. Um, I know some people don't care for the WWE, but it's, it has this foundation on the history of pro wrestling. Um, the people that work there, the people that used to work there, uh, the way that they train their athletes, the way that they teach their athletes, uh, you know, it's, it's a different world. And when you look at a company like Impact, 
you know, who's in that locker room? Who, who are the agents for that company? I mean, Tommy Dreamer, pretty old school guy. Lance Storm, pretty old school guy. I don't think that a, a talent like CM Punk would even like try to get away with some of the things he got away with in AEW. And I, I also don't feel like people on the roster could get away with really anything. You know, I don't think you would have had a, a, a brawl in or brawl out at uh, at Impact. You know, they might have had a kangaroo court. They might have done the old school uh, wrestling uh, justice. You know, maybe someone would have shit in somebody's bag. I don't know, but I just feel like it would have been a little different, you know. But um, at the end of the day, uh, WWE won the night. Uh, CM Punk will appear on Raw in just a few hours. With any luck, uh, you know, they're going to go forward with the Seth freaking Rollins versus the best in the world. It's clobbering time and all the other cliche things that they can say about CM Punk. But when it comes to uh, impact, I think if they would have managed to snag Punk, even for a short term time, I think they could have brought a lot of eyeballs to their product. And like I said in the previous episodes, I think it would have been a very big deal for the uh for impact wrestling and in the meantime impact is out in mexico uh doing a joint show with triple a and cm punk is making his debut on raw to, a re-debut on raw tonight taking photo ops with triple h of all people you know they said hell is frozen over and it is getting kind of cold here in the uh, end of the year in 2023 i didn't think we'd see cm punk back in a wwe ring and so I'm excited to see what's next for them. But uh, I just I felt like this was something that I wanted to talk about. And it's not really uh, appropriate for the Alliance guys live stream because, you know, we talk more about the NWA. Um, but I, I just want to share my two cents on it. Uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of people hating on CM Punk, and calling him a hypocrite. But, you know, he's got to take care of himself and his family. And he was fired fired so i don't i don't fault the guy at all for trying to continue his uh the reignition of the passion of pro wrestling for cm punk and and who knows like maybe we'll see cm punk versus seth rollins at wrestlemania maybe we get it at the royal rumble um he signed for a multi-year deal according to pro wrestling insider uh i'm excited to see what's next for cm punk and i hope you guys are too Thank you for tuning in to the Alliance Blog Podcast, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, the premier source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. Would you consider subscribing so you never miss a new episode? You can follow us on all social media at the Alliance Blog, and we stream live on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern at the Alliance Blog. Until then... We are the Alliance.